Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And you forgave me of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you love your of mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter, suffering, and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this, your confession to of my office as a called and ordained servant of the Word, announce the grace of God unto all of you, and in the stead, and by the command, of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Old Testament reading from Isaiah, the 61st chapter. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decks himself like a priest with a beautiful headdress, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its sprouts, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to sprout up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to sprout up before all the nations. For Zion's sake I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not be quiet, until her righteousness goes forth as brightness, and her salvation as a burning torch. The nations shall see your righteousness, and all the kings of glory, and you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord, and royal diadem in the hand of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Paul writing in the letter to the Galatians. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir through God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand and join in the singing of the Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the second chapter. When the time came for their purification, according to the law of the Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every male who first opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord. And to offer a sacrifice according to what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and this man was righteous and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came in the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus, to do for him according to the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, that you have prepared in the presence of all the peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for the glory of your people Israel. And his father and his mother marveled at what was said about him, and blessed them and said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is appointed for the fall and rising of many in Israel, and for a sign that is opposed, and a sword will pierce through your own soul also so that thoughts from many hearts may be revealed. There was a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years, having lived with her husband seven years from when she was a virgin. And then as a widow until she was 84, she did not depart from the temple, worshiping with fasting and prayer at night and day. And coming up at that very hour, she began to give thanks to God and to speak to, of him, 
to all who were waiting the redemption of Jerusalem. And when they had performed everything according to the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. This is the gospel of the Lord. <laughs> we unite our hearts and voices in declaring the faith that we have in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated as we join the singing of our hymn once in Royal David City.
bow our heads in a word of prayer. Lord, how good it is for us to be here in your presence again. How good it is to share in the gracious good news that you offer us in your beloved Son, Jesus Christ. Grant to us this day, O Lord, your Holy Spirit's power to rest upon us, that the eyes of faith might truly see, that the hearts of faith might truly believe. Grant us our prayer for your sake, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Back in my college days, I met a, another college student. His name was Russ. Russ was much like every other college student in that day. In fact, Russ lived in our, our dorm, the, in our dorm house. It was, he lived downstairs, first door on the right-hand side. He went to chapel as well as everyone else as did as he went to his classes. In order to do that, you had to climb up a huge set of steps that rush. Russ was always the time rushing, running up those steps as well as running down those steps. Some of us thought sometime you're going to break your fool neck, Russ. But nonetheless, he did it just the same. He was well respected. He was well known by both college students as well as college professors, all looking at him as a typical student, at least in some ways. There was nothing strange in the sense of college being, Rush being in college. And I forgot to tell you, though, Russ was born blind. He had never seen a beautiful sunrise or a gorgeous sunset. He had never seen the shimmering on the lake of the light shining upon the face surface and the face of the water. He had never seen the smile of a child. He had never experienced seeing a winter sky dotted with clouds looking like puffs of cotton. He had never seen that. One day I was talking with Russ after having recorded one of the chapters of one of his textbooks because there were very few textbooks that were written in Braille. And I explained to him that I had two grandmothers who were blind but who had become blind later in their lives. They had experienced seeing things they could remember if you said a cardinal, they would know a cardinal. If you said a goose flying overhead, they could see a goose flying overhead in their mind. But Russ had never had those experiences, had never known what it was like. And so I, I spoke to him, and I said, Russ, what's it really like being blind? I mean, you can't see anything. And his answer caught me quite off guard. He said, well, I see far better than you realize, but it's not with my eyes. I see with my hands, the fingertips. I see with my ears. I see with my skin. I see a variety of different ways using the senses, such as even my nose telling me where I'm going or where I'm not going. Well, that day, Russ gave me a totally different perspective on blindness and how the blind do really see. And that brings us to today's gospel reading of a man named Simeon. Now, we're, we don't know a great deal about Simeon. We know he served in the temple. And the little bit that we do know about him is from the pages of, of Luke what the gospel reading for today declares. But other than that, we really don't know anything about Simeon. He was just man. He was a devout man. He went to the temple. Did it all the time. Well, there's tradition about Simeon, and I must say, I almost believe it could be true. There was a day came when there was a group of men that were called together to translate the Old Testament, what we call the Old Testament, into the Greek language from the Hebrew and Aramaic. Simeon, as the, the tradition goes, was elected to be one of them. And as he 
help to write, we find it most interesting something else about what tradition tells us about Simeon. And it's this. Simeon was a blind man. That makes it even more incredible, doesn't it? And yet here is a man who apparently helped in the translation of the Bible of that era, what we call today the Septuagint, or the 70 men that were used to translate. Again, as I said, it's only tradition. It's not in scripture. It's only a tradition. And some traditions have a way of having some element of truth in them, but we're not sure what. But as we read our text for today, it says about him, and he came into the, in the spirit into the temple, and when the priest brought in the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Now, Lord, you're letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, that you have prepared the presence of all the peoples. As we look at Simeon today, and his words, we might well paraphrase them for him to be asking us a question. Do you see what I see? Let's first recognize Simeon's arrival in the temple that day. It was not a mere accident. It was not simply a phenomenon that he could not explain. He knew how he got there. He was driven or led by the Spirit into the temple where Mary and Joseph had brought their son to have him dedicated to the Lord, to pay the price to buy him back, as it were. And so as he is drawn to the temple like a moth is drawn to the light, the Spirit revealed to him earlier that he should not die until he had seen the Lord's anointed. I believe this is what the Apostle Paul meant when he was writing years later in the letter to the Romans. So faith comes by hearing. Hearing the message that is the word. Simeon heard God calling to him to go to the temple that day. Simeon saw God in action. Simeon beheld the Lord's glory in that sense that he was brought to that temple to see the Lord's anointed. So yes, we would have to say faith does come by hearing. And the message Simeon, like so many other Jews, had been taught and believed, the long anticipated, the long prophesied Messiah was soon to come. So that now he could break forth in song in humble adoration for what God had done for him. Simeon would have held to what his ancestors had held to, that God keeps his promises. Simeon would have been steeped in scripture throughout all of his life, especially as he worked in the temple. And he would remember the words of Hosea the prophet when calling the nation to contrition and repentance because of their sin. Hosea wrote, As surely as the sun rises, he will appear. He will come to us. And, of course, Hosea is talking about God. God will come to us. It's rather interesting, too, is what was it that Joseph was told that the child born to him would be called? Jesus, for he will save his people from their sin. The God with us, the Emmanuel. And so Simeon could well have been saying to that kind of people, do you see what I see? The Holy One as he beheld the child and took the child out of the arms of his mother and then broke forth into that song. Lord, now let your servant depart in peace according to word. For my eyes have seen your salvation. Like Simeon, we equally have been led by the Spirit of our God. Led through the word of God that comes to us. The word of God that comes to us through our daily devotions. That word of God that comes to us 
here in this church. That word of God that comes to us in the word made flesh that dwells among us and gives us his body and blood to eat and to drink for the forgiveness of our sins. Like sin, we've equally been called by the gospel. Called and enlightened by his gifts. Called to faith. Called to believe. Called to trust. Called to have confidence in. Yes, the, faith, the gift of faith was given to Simeon that day. Given that is the same gift that is to you and to me as well. Advent brings us to in light of what this is all about. Advent is a season of two things. A season of contrition and repentance as well as of joy. A season of recognizing what we have done and left undone. And repentance that is the desire to turn around and do the right. How do we know this? Because what God has shown us in Simeon. We've heard the message that Christ has appeared. We celebrated his nativity on Thursday and Friday. And now we continue in that celebration of him who is with us. That Jesus is for all people. Now pay close attention to our words of our text for today. A light for a revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people, Israel. Do you understand the implications of what Simeon is telling us here? It's so easy to gloss over them. So easy to simply think of them simply as words and having no meaning. Even as in a few moments we'll be singing the song of Simeon. Lord, now let your servant depart in peace according to your word. It's rather interesting because Simeon, being a Jew, he knew how it was that Israel thought it was the only people. But here Simeon is saying something that is radical. That this child that is born, the God with us, is not only for the Jew but for all the people. It's rather interesting what the Greek term is that is used there that we translate into the English Gentiles. That's not what it says. The Greek language calls the nations the ethnos or ethnos. We are the nations for all the nations, not only for the Hebrews, but for all the peoples, whoever they might be. The message is for all, and the message is Jesus for all. Simeon is discussing how the Jews have it all wrong. That Messiah is for every person, man, woman, child. It's the most powerful message that's being stated to us. God does not pick favorites. That God chooses all people to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. Because God sent his one and only son, whose nativity we recently celebrated again, to be our one and only savior. To be the one that could right the wrongs that we could not. To die the death that we rightly deserved. To pay the price on the, and then on the third day rise from the tomb, bringing life and immortality to light through his proclamation of the gospel, his good news. God has sent his son for all the nationalities, all the ethnics, all the peoples, that they too might know and confess with their heart and with their mouth, Jesus Christ is my Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Yes, Jesus is for all. I was walking in my neighborhood the day before Christmas Eve, one of my many different walks I take, and I noticed so many houses that were, houses that were well decorated, so many lights shining brightly, and they're truly beautiful. Here is Santa Claus, there is Santa Claus, 
here snowman with stovepipe hat. But he knows one thing missing. There was no crash. There was no stable. There was no Jesus. And it brought to mind what Jeff Keynes wrote in, in his cartoon, Family Circus. He has little Dolly singing this line. Oh, come, let us ignore him. Sad but true, isn't it? But it tells the church today that it has an important responsibility. All the nations need to know Christ, need to know Jesus, this Jesus who came to this earth, who took upon himself our human flesh and form. This Jesus who grew to be a man, at the age of 33, offered himself as a ransom for many. This Jesus died for us. This Jesus who arose for us. And this Jesus who's coming again for us. That Jesus is for all people. Not one group, but all people. Not just for Germans, but for all people. For all people. It is this Jesus who has fulfilled the law for us. It is this Jesus who took our place. It is this Jesus who's gone to prepare a place for us. And this Jesus coming again. I must share with you, I want to share with you this rather personal thing that took place in our family a week ago yesterday. It ties right in very nicely with this text. We had a, a nephew by the name of Greg. Greg had been the recipient of a heart transplant two years ago this Thanksgiving. On Saturday afternoon and evening, we received a call telling us that Greg's condition had worsened. He was under hospice care. The hospice nurse was saying that there's not long for him to last. This message came to us at about 5 o'clock in the afternoon. And by 11 o'clock, we received the message Greg had gone to be with the Lord. I wrote to my niece, his wife, at least these words, Lord, now let your servant depart in peace according to your word, because Greg has seen the Lord's salvation. I can only imagine Greg saying to me today, and after that day when he died, Uncle, do you see what I see? My friends, what do you see? May you see Christ. May you see the one who loves you and gave himself for you. May you see this Jesus. Do you see what I see? May we all see him, both now and always. Amen. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We join the singing of the offertory.
rise for prayer. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For grace to rejoice in Christ's blessed incarnation and thankfulness that in the fullness of time, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law and give light to become the children of God. Lord, in your mercy, you know. For the families of all Christians, that the Heavenly Father, from whom all fatherhood on earth is named, would bless them with his promises, for parents, that they would be diligent to take delight in their work, for children, that by God's favor they would grow in strength and wisdom, for all widows, orphans, and broke families, that God would comfort them in his mercy and give them joy and redemption, one for them as Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who may minister and judge our laws, that they may serve faithfully in their task according to your pleasure, for the benefit of our people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the lonely, that they would be comforted with the sure and certain knowledge that God would never forsake them, and that within the house of faith they might find family, friends, love, and loving companionship. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the sick and the suffering, and especially those who desire our prayers, for Joyce Walt, Kim Noah, Tom England, Arlene Haslam, Rose Morris, Lewis, Lennonberger, Minan Montgomery, Allie Clark, Lauren and Glenn and Donna Velarde, for Dan Brackett and Missy Montgomery, for Walter Walker and Bev Tommy, for Anita Reinhardt and Beulah Meadows, for Deborah Hughes and Teresa Clark, for Fern Harding and God Hood, for William Burkhart and Ashley Donnelly, as all, as all others that we name in our hearts at this time, that according to God's gracious will, they would be healed. And for those who mourn, especially Pastor Summer and his family, that God would fill their hearts with the certain hope of the resurrection, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. For those who receive the Lord's Supper this day, that they would behold their salvation in the very body and blood of our Christ given for them, and with St. Simeon, be well prepared to depart in peace according to God's word. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, in whose name we pray this. Amen. We continue then with the preface on page and the page of our bulletin. The Lord be with you. seen. Therefore, the angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name evermore, praising you and saying,
this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. 